हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू इकोनॉमिक्स मेड इजी चैनल आई ट्रस्ट यू ऑल आर वेरी वेल इन दिस लॉकडाउन सिचुएशन इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ग्रोथ रेट्स डिफरेंट ग्रोथ रेट्स स्टेटिंग इन हेरॉड मॉडल एक्चुअली हेरॉड हैज यूज्ड थ्री काइंड ऑफ ग्रोथ रेट्स द वन इज वॉरेंटेड ग्रोथ रेट्स द सेकंड वन इज एक्चुअल ग्रोथ रेट एंड द थर्ड वन इज नेचुरल ग्रोथ रेट ओके सो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दीस थ्री ग्रोथ रेट्स इन टुडेस वीडियो but uh, i hope that uh, you guys have seen my previous video but if you don't then uh, just click the card uh, showing above on your screen because in that video i had discussed about the difference between economic growth and economic development which is the most important part uh, according to me obviously because uh, you need to know about the difference between what is economic growth because herod has used these terms uh, so many times in his model that uh, economic growth growth rate warranted growth rate actual growth rate natural growth rate or growth rate so so uh, we need to understand first thing the economic growth na what is economic growth and what is the difference between economic growth and economic development and i had also discussed about the herod uh, model assumptions over there in my previous video so just go and watch that video first and after that continue to this video okay so let us uh, now start with warranted growth rate if you guys have gone through different books then uh, you might have seen that in many books uh, warranted growth rate is simply as defined as the uh, equilibrium growth rate in which the investors are fully satisfied by investing their money into the business and getting their expected profit from that business okay so according to different books uh, the the definition of warranted growth rate is very simple and uh, the that warranted growth rate is nothing but the equilibrium growth rate uh, in order to maximize our profit like right? okay but the uh, but when i used to went through this model then uh, there was only one question knocking my mind continuously that why uh, why do we need to uh, equate gw as s by v where s is nothing but marginal prop propensity to save and v is nothing but capital output ratio actually i was unable to understand the fact that uh in order to get the warranted growth rate why we need to divide uh, marginal propensity to save uh by capital output ratio and what are these terms actually mean so by uh, getting into the definition of uh, economic growth finally i understand this and uh, i want to make you guys also understand about the warranted rate of growth actually by economic growth what do we mean if you guys have remem remembered then economic growth is nothing but uh, the growth in investment growth in consumption growth in income these all kind of growth are together known as economic growth okay so warranted growth rate is very simple growth rate in investment uh if i say that uh there is a uh, if in a, in a, according to nation uh, or uh, you can say like uh, that in a nation the warranted growth rate is this much what does it mean it actually means that the growth rate in investment in a particular nation is about something some numerical value right so how how much is the growth rate of investment uh, for a particular country this is what we uh, mean by the term warranted growth rate actually okay so let us just uh, let us just understand it through an example okay gw i uh, gw now now we we are very much aware of the fact that gw is nothing but growth rate in investment okay so the growth rate it growth rate in investment or growth the growth rate of investment is directly proportional to marginal propensity to save and it is inversely proportional to capital output ratio why is it so what is the reason behind this now we need to understand this very uh, carefully okay okay so for the former part uh, why why gw or the growth rate in investment is directly proportional to uh, savings or the margin propensity to save 
let us uh, consider an example okay suppose i need to establish a business or start i need to i want to start a business on my own okay so what is the first requirement in order to start a business obviously i have to invest some money in my business so that i can make some products out uh, uh, from that money and then i can sell th that product into the market right but uh, for for investment i need some money right and as i have told that uh, i i want to um, establish a business or uh, i i want to establish a business on my own that means i i don't want uh, money from my father or from any kind of investor or i don't want to go there right i want to establish my business on my own so the first thing uh, i started looking at my pocket it means that how much i have as savings because if i have some amount in savings then that amount i i will use that amount as investment in my business in my own business and from the and from there i can make some profits and all type you know so the basic requirement of establishing a business is i need to invest some money and in order to invest some money i have to uh, i have some savings i have some savings um, so that i can use that saving as investment so savings and investment which is uh, which we know that saving is equals to investment identity you know we know that right so saving so from there we know that higher the, uh, the amount of saving i have higher uh, will be uh, my investment obviously so from there uh, we get the that the investment is directly proportional to savings okay so now let us come uh, to the second part why investment is inversely proportional to capital output ratio now understanding capital output ratio suppose you have rupees 100 in your pocket okay a hypothetical example let us suppose that you have rupees 100 in your pocket and uh, the labor wage is rupees 10 per labor okay i have two deals for you actually i bring two, uh, two deals for you that in one deal i have one labor produces one unit of output and you are asked to uh, produce 10 units of output suppose uh, you get an order from an industry or something that you need to produce uh, 10 units of output for them so in order to produce 10 units of output i have two deals for you in one deal uh, one labor produces one unit of output so in order to produce 10 units of output how much labor uh, would you want to hire obviously 10 labors so that you can produce 10 units of output and for that how much cost you have to pay or how much cost does it take obviously 10 labor and each labor requires rupees 10 wage so so that uh, your total cost is rupees 100 so now you have nothing left as in your pocket you invest your whole money in producing your output okay so this is one kind of capital output ratio so what do we actually mean by capital output ratio capital output ratio is nothing but the amount of capital you need to produce one unit of output let us suppose that the ratio of capital output is 3 is to 1 so uh, by this it means that you uh, yeah, you need three units of capital in order to produce one unit of output just like this if you have rupees 100 and you are asked to uh, produce 10 units of output so i bring two deals for you in one deal you uh, one labor produces one unit or one unit of output and from that uh, you know that uh, you have to uh, your total cost is rupees 100 okay in another deal uh, the labor wage is same okay rupees 10 per labor in another deal the labor are more efficient the labors are more efficient okay so in that in uh, in this deal one labor produces two units of output and you are obviously your order is same you have to you still have to produce only 10 units of output so now how much labor uh, do you require in order to produce 
टेन यूनिट्स ऑफ आउटपुट ऑब्वियसली फाइव लेबर बिकॉज नाउ वन लेबर प्रोड्यूसेज टू यूनिट्स ऑफ आउटपुट सो योर टोटल कॉस्ट विल बी फाइव इंटू टेन बिकॉज टेन इज टेन इज द वेज पर लेबर एंड यू रिक्वायर ओनली फाइव लेबर सो रुपीज फिफ्टी इज योर टोटल कॉस्ट ओके so here i can see that the capital output ratio here is lower than the former one okay so what do we actually mean so i have now now uh, i have rupees 50 extra in my hand because in the former deal i lost my whole penny or or lost my whole money in producing the output but Uh, now in the second deal i have something or i have rupees 50 extra in my hand and that extra money i can uh, use in uh, say advertisement or uh, marketing or something else so what does it mean actually lower the capital output ratio higher you are willing to invest in your business so from there it is uh, now it is known that uh, the capital um, the investment depends on mainly two things the first one is mps higher the saving higher the investment and lower the capital output ratio higher the investment so this is what we need to know about the warranted growth rate so uh, from some data or anything else uh, we can uh, say about a country's warranted rate of growth okay so if if the according to their population and according to their all other things uh if country have if country saves this much amount and if the country have uh this much capital output ratio actually capital output ratio it uh you can also say like it is the efficiency of producing output okay uh, how much you are efficient in the in that in this case you are very much efficient in producing output uh as compared to the former one okay so if the country has more efficient and it has more savings then its uh, warranted rate of growth is also very good or uh, we can say that his growth rate of investment is also very good so this is what we uh, mean, we actually mean by the warranted growth rate now the actual growth rate is it's very simple obviously actual growth rate is nothing but the present uh, savings you have and the present capital output ratio or the present efficiency you have okay that is what uh, we know about the actual growth rate the state in which the nation is actually in okay now the natural growth rate what do we actually mean by natural growth rate so the natural growth rate is uh, actually it depends on the population okay uh, we can say that natural growth rate is nothing but the growth rate of population so it um, the growth rate required to maintain full employment okay so obviously when the population increases so the growth rate also increases it should increase in order to maintain full employment and vice versa if the population decreases then the natural growth rate should be decreased in order to maintain full employment basically natural growth rate is nothing but the growth rate uh, in through which uh, we can maintain a nation's full employment condition okay so these are the terms of herod growth rate models uh, in my uh, upcoming videos i will discuss about the short run equilibrium long run equilibrium of herod model so let me know if you uh, don't understand anything uh, by comment in by commenting in the comment section and also do follow economics made easy on facebook also because now economics made easy is on is available on facebook also so that you can never miss any notifications of upcoming videos as well as uh, of previous videos and i also um, you know i try to uh, bring some kind of new memes over there also so that, so that my page never get gets like so, so much boring page so hope you understand this well uh, very well thank you so much for watching my video